Ten months ago, I reviewed the 7 Artisans 35mm f0.95 and I thought that, that lens was quite good, especially for the money. It's not clinically sharp, but it's a pretty good lens overall. Now in 2021, 7 Artisans just recently released this 50mm f0.95 for Sony APS-C E-mount. And I'm excited to check this thing out and to review it, so let's start by taking a look at how it comes packaged. And it comes in a small white box. Inside you get foam padding, the lens itself, and that is it. There is a plastic rear lens cap and a tension fit metal front lens cap. First impressions of this lens is that I like the dimensions. It is compact, wide, and it features a huge piece of glass on the front. It's also quite heavy for the size, coming in at 418 grams, which is almost a pound. When you compare it side by side to the 35mm f0.95, it is remarkable how the 35 is even an f0.95 with the front lens element being so small by comparison. Having played with both of these lenses for the last couple of weeks, I can tell you that the build quality of the 50mm is just a touch better. However, I do think that the focal distance scale is better executed on the 35mm. Starting at the rear of the lens, it has the now signature 7 Artisans dark chrome metal lens mount. No electronic connections because this is a fully manual lens. No weather sealing either. In front of that is the focal distance scale that you already saw and a 7 Artisans logo. The focus ring is here as well and it is good, smooth in either direction, plenty of heft to the rotation so it does not feel cheap. As you rotate this lens, the barrel does extend a little under a centimeter forward and back. In front of the focus ring is the aperture ring which rotates very smoothly and has plenty of heft which does make it an improvement over the aperture ring on the 35mm. There are no clicks here and I wish that there were. Moving to the front, there is a huge front lens element and a very clean design. There is no text on the front because that would get in the way of this huge piece of glass. And looking through it while rotating the aperture ring, you can see that there are 13 aperture blades moving smoothly back and forth. This lens has seven elements in five groups, which makes it a relatively simple design. And mounted on my a6100, it looks great. I do like the proportions and you can cannot argue with the build quality. It makes for a very compact, ultra-fast prime setup. Compare it to the Brighton Star, and this 7 Artisans is almost half the size. So it is a good looking lens, but none of that matters if it does not perform well. So I put it on my a6100, and I took it out, and I took a number of samples with it. And here are the results. These are all unedited, uncorrected, unfiltered, straight out of the camera. Ready, set, go. Alright, so there is quite a bit to unpack here. The first couple of shots that I took with this lens, I thought that there was some dirt or smudge or oil on the front of the glass, or maybe my son had touched it, because everything that I was shooting, wide open at least, looked soft. In fact, sometimes what you get with this lens wide open is a hazy and low contrast image. At times it really looks like there is a mist filter attached to the end of this lens. But it's not all bad because there is some sharpness there. You can see here, compared side by side to the Sigma 56mm, which is shot wide open, 
this seven artisans in this situation with good lighting does perform okay. It is nowhere near the sharpness level of the Sigma 56 on the left, as much as I tried to focus it well, and you do get some weird things like chromatic aberrations that I will discuss later. What is interesting in this comparison, however, is that it doesn't seem like there is a drastic difference in bouquet size between f1.4 on the left and f0.95 on the right, even though we know the 7 Artisan's lens is letting in more light as the camera is shooting at 1 over 1600 with the same ISO value. Stopping the 7 Artisan's lens down to f1.4, there is is a marginal improvement in contrast and sharpness, but still nowhere near where that Sigma is on the left. So at least wide open, this lens produces images that are okay in terms of sharpness. They are not tack sharp by any stretch of that word. And really compared to any half decent lens out there, this is not going to wow anyone in terms of sharpness. The other problem with this lens wide open is the focus ring. There simply isn't enough rotation. I should specify that by saying that there is enough rotation to focus comfortably on a subject that is very close to you, but beyond about five to 10 feet, you can see that there is less than a centimeter of rotation. This lens truly does need a more precise focus ring. That is the one area in which I'd say the Brighton Star is a better lens. And while I'm on the topic, here is a side-by-side -side comparison of both the Seven Artisans and the Brighton Star wide open on my A6600. Surprisingly, the Seven Artisans does look sharper here, but the bokeh from the Brighton Star does look a little bit more creamy. Anyway, let's get back to the Seven Artisans. The bokeh quality with this lens is good, relatively smooth, and there is plenty of it. They do sometimes have chromatic aberrations in them and a little bit of outlining, but overall the bokeh performance is great. I found that it produced pleasing results in the majority of situations. What wasn't pleasing, however, is the chromatic aberrations that you get with this lens. In almost any situation where you have a bright contrasty background and a darker subject, you see a lot of chromatic aberration with this lens. I wouldn't say it's the absolute worst that I've seen, but it's up there with as bad as most fast f0.95 lenses are. This 7 Artisans 50mm also flares pretty easily. The lens does not come with any lens hood and that is a shame because it could use one, especially because you have a giant piece of glass at the front that likes to reflect sunlight. There were a few shots that I took that turned out pretty good even with the flare and sometimes it does add a little bit in certain situations. I'd say vignetting is a non-issue with this lens. I found very little of it except if you try to use this thing on a full frame Sony, in which case you'll be greeted with this, which is not optimal. So at the end of the day, there are some certain appealing things about this new lens from Seven Artisans. Obviously, it gives you that kind of hazy, almost analog look if you are shooting it wide open, which a lot of people are looking for and a lot of people appreciate. If you are looking for something that's more technical, that's going to be tack sharp, this is probably not the lens for you. Although I admit it does get better as you stop it down. It's definitely usable at f1.4 and at f2, but if you are looking at buying this lens, you're probably looking for something a little bit more unique, something that's going to be a low light performer that's going to give you a super shallow depth of field and super challenge when it comes to manual focusing as well. And for all of those things, this lens does perform extremely well. It's built well, it's built like a tank, very compact, travel friendly. So there are a lot of pluses with this lens. And the best part about this lens, I think, is that it's priced very well at about 230 US dollars. That is almost unheard of in the world of super fast prime lenses. If you went to Leica and asked them for a 50 millimeter manual lens that does f0.95, they would ask you for right about $13,000 US. That's right, the Leica is 56 times as expensive as this Seven Artisans lens. And while they aren't on the same level of design or craftsmanship or brand prestige, you have to admit the Seven Artisans, if nothing else, represents an impressive value proposition. Even when comparing it to a Miticon at $800 or even the Brighton Star at $400, 
this little seven artisans is a bit of a deal, at least if you are looking for a lens that does f0.95. And while I don't think Sigma owners are going to be trading in their 56 millimeter lenses for this one, I do think that the seven artisans is going to be a popular lens among the photography community. If you guys are interested in reading more about it or possibly buying it, as always, I'll have some links down in the description below, so definitely check those out. Let me know down in the comments what your guys' thoughts are regarding this lens's performance and how it compares to other lenses out there and what you think of the price as well. Uh, that is going to be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something from it. Thanks, as always, for all of your comments, all of your likes, and your support. Stay tuned for more and have a nice day. Bye-bye.